Hey everyone, in today's episode, we're going to learn how to use the 3ds Max Slate Material Editor. We're going to start by opening the Material Editor. We can do this by pressing the Material Editor button in the main toolbar or the M key in our keyboard. The Slate Material Editor is an improved version of the old Compact Material Editor. It allows us to see a graphic view of all the nodes and wires in our materials. This can help us to simplify the creation of complex materials. We can switch between the two modes by selecting Modes in the Material Editor menu and choosing Compact or Slate Material. But I recommend to use the Slate Material Editor. The Slate Material window includes Seeds sections, Menus, Material Editor toolbars, we can also find the Views tab at the center of the editor. This is where we can view and edit our shaders. If we right-click the View tab, we can find additional options. We create new view, we can create additional tabs. This can help us to organize our materials. We can also rename our views or delete the selected view if we don't need it anymore. The other three panels are the Material Map Browser, the Navigator, and the Material Parameter Editor. It is also possible to undock these panels from the main window by dragging the title bars. For example, we can undock the Material Map Browser and move it outside of the main window. We can dock it again by dragging it to one of the arrows. The Material Map Browser shows a list of all the available materials or maps we can create. It automatically hides the materials that are not compatible with the assigned render. For example, if we activate Corona Render, we can see that that new Corona tab has been added to the materials and maps, and any non-compatible materials has been removed. We can also see a list of the materials that are currently in the scene listed under the scene materials. And the last section is the sample slot. We can use this section to store materials or maps that are not assigned to objects in the scene, but we want it to store in the scene file. The Navigator window is going to give us an overview of where we are in the main graph. We can see a preview of the view and the shaders. The red outline indicates the shape of the view window. But I recommend using the mouse shortcut. We're going to press the middle mouse button to pan. We can see how the Navigator outline moves. And to zoom in or zoom out, we're going to use the scroll mouse button to add materials or maps to our view. We can drag and drop them from the Material Map Browser to the view. For example, to add a new Corona physical material, we're going to open Materials, Corona, and then drag and drop the Corona physical material to the view. We can do the same process for other materials like the Corona Legacy material, the Corona Light material, or even other available materials like the General Multi-Sub Object. To add maps, we're going to follow the same steps. To add a new bitmap, we're going to navigate to Maps, Corona, and then drag and drop a Corona bitmap. We're then going to navigate to C, Program Files, Corona, Materials, Assets, and select one of the available Corona maps. We can also open the folder in Windows Explorer and then drag and drop the bitmap. Something really nice about this approach is that as long as we don't click 3ds Max, we can keep dragging and dropping maps. The materials and maps have output and input, the little gray dots on the left and right side of the shader. Some, like the physical material, have both, and others, like the bitmap, only have an output. To assign the Corona bitmap to the base color, we're going to click and hold the Corona bitmap output. After moving the mouse, we're going to see a red wire. We're then going to connect this to the base color input. It is important to know that it's not possible to connect an output to another output or an input to another input. If we try to do it, we're going to see a red dot indicating that it's not possible. To view the parameters of any material or map, we need to select it by double-clicking it. We can see that the node is highlighted with dotted lines and the parameter editor on the right has been updated with all the attributes for the selected material or map. There are a few ways to assign the material to objects in our scene. 
we can drag and drop it, use a button in our toolbar, or by right-clicking the shader. We're going to start by renaming the material Leather. We can also modify the reflection by changing the roughness in the Corona physical material. We're going to keep all other parameters as default. For this example, we're going to assign the material to the sofa. To do this, we can click and drag the output port of the material, holding the mouse button and then drag and drop the red wire into any object in the scene. We don't need to have the object selected, but it only works for non-frozen objects. If we have multiple objects selected, we're going to see a pop-up dialog asking if we want to assign the material to all the selected objects or only to the object that was under the cursor. The next option, and the one I recommend, is to select the object we want to assign the material. After this, we can use the Assign Material to Selection button, or we can right-click the shader and select Assign Material to Selection. One of the advantages of using this option is that we can assign the material to all selected objects. This can also help us to be more accurate. Now that we know how to create materials and assign them to objects, we need to learn how the materials work in the material editor and how to manage them. We can see that we have multiple maps and material, but just because we have a material in the material editor, it doesn't mean that it's assigned to an object and vice versa. Just because a material is assigned to an object doesn't mean that it's loaded into the graph. In this case, the graph editor is just a sandbox it is really important to understand this concept to avoid losing materials if we remove them from the views. To learn this concept, we're going to start with the basics of the node. To minimize the material, we can press the button at the top right corner of the node. We can also do this for multiple nodes by selecting All, and then in the Material Editor menu, select Views, Open Close Selected Nodes. After this, we can click out to the selected nodes. We can organize the maps and materials in the graph by pressing the layout button in the toolbar. We have two options, vertical and horizontal. I recommend using the vertical option as it's easier to navigate. If we double click the sample image of the material, we can enlarge it to have a better visibility. When a material is assigned to an object in the scene, we can see these brackets on the corner of the material sample. If the material is not assigned to an object, like this new material, the brackets are not visible. If we delete the material with bracket, as it is assigned to an object, nothing is going to be affected in the scene. We can see that the material is still assigned to all the objects. However, if I delete one of the nodes that is connected to the main material, as this is a destructive change, we can see that the objects in the scene are modified. If we delete the material without brackets, as the material is not assigned to any object in the scene, we're going to lose that material information. We can get the assigned material back into the graph from the scene material tab in the material map browser. We have two options, instance or copy. If we choose instance, we're going to get the version of the material that is assigned to the object. If we choose copy, we can create a variation of that material. It is also possible to use the pick material from object button in the toolbar to get the materials. This is the option I recommend, especially for big scenes. We can also create a copy of the material by pressing shift and dragging the material. If we do this to a material, with connected nodes or maps, we can see that only the material is copied, but all nodes are still connected. We can also select the material and all or some of the maps to create a copy. To show a specific map in the object, for example, the bond map instead of the diffuse map, we need to select the map by double-clicking it and then press the Show Shaded Material in Viewport button in the main toolbar. One last handy trick is to turn on in the Options menu the Move Children option. This allows to move all children nodes of the selected map or material. This is really handy to organize the graph. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.